Next question from Brother Khurshid Akbar from Karnataka, India. Allah says in the Quran that if all of you from the first to the last come and worship me, it will not increase in my greatness. If this is the matter, then why does he order us to worship him? What the brother is asking that if all of you come and worship me, it will not increase my greatness. It's not a verse of the Quran. There are similar verses, I'll come to it later on. What the brother is referring to is a hadith, a Sahih hadith, in Sahih Muslim, word number six, hadith number 6572, where our beloved Prophet said that Allah says, O oh my slaves, if the first of you and the last of you, if all the men and if all the jinns, if they were equal to the most pious person whose heart is the most pious heart in the full world, if their piety is equal to that piety of the most pious man on the face of the earth, it will not increase in my dominion. That means it will make no benefit for me. And Allah continues. O oh my slaves, the first of you and the last of you, the men and the jinn, if all of you are equal to the most evil person, the evilest person in the whole of humanity, if all the men and jinn are equal to the most evil person, it will not reduce even a bit from my dominion. O oh my slaves, if the first of you and the last of you, if the jinns and the human beings, if all of you gather together on a strip and if they ask me whatever you want, and if I give everything for whatever you want, it will not reduce in my dominion. The loss would not be greater than when a needle is dipped in an ocean. I am recording and will repeat all this to you. So that if you realize, you will pray the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't, then you will be to blame. From here we come to know that irrespective whether you are very pious or you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will not increase in Allah's greatness or in dominion. If you are very bad, if you are evil, it will not make any loss to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you ask anything what you want and Allah gives you everything, yet it will not reduce in the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is like if you dip a needle in the ocean, even that much will not be the loss in Allah's dominion. There's a verse in the Quran, in Surah An Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 6, which says that if you strive for your work, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require any of the wants of any of his creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not have the need of any of his creation. Allah repeats a similar message in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 15, that it is you who are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not in need of anyone and is free of all wants. So these verses of the Quran say Allah doesn't require anything from his creation. Coming to the question, then why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us to worship him? Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Dhariyat, chapter number 51, verse number 56, That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the jinn and the men not but to worship him. What is the reason? The reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to worship him is not so that he will benefit. It is because you will benefit. And how will you benefit if you worship him? See, when we worship, the best form of worship is salah. In our salah, the most important thing that you have to recite, without which the salah is not complete, it is Surah Fatiha. Surah Fatiha consists of seven verses. It is the first chapter of the glorious Quran. It is called as Ummul Quran, the mother of the Quran. It is called the major Quran. If you read Surah Fatiha, the first three verses, it says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the world. Ar-Rahman rahim the merciful, the gracious. Malik Yawmuddin, the master of the day of judgment. The first three verses of the Quran are praising Allah. 
Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most merciful, the most gracious, the master of the day of judgment. Here, why are we praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The reason we praise because it is human psychology, the moment you start praising someone, you start following him. For example, if your mother is sick, and if someone on the street, a person comes and tells you, do this treatment so that your mother, who has got a heart attack, she will be cured. And there's another person who you know is the most famous heart specialist in the world. He comes and tells you regarding the treatment for your mother who had a heart attack. Who will you follow? Will you follow the unknown person on the street or will you follow the advice of the heart specialist, the famous heart specialist in the world? But naturally, you will follow the advice of the heart specialist because he's famous. The moment you know that he is the person who is the best heart specialist, you will follow his advice. Similarly here, when you say Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the most wise. Allah is Hakim. He is the most merciful. We are praising Allah not because it will benefit him. Because the moment you start praising him, then Surah Fatiha continues. It says, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Malik Yawamuddin, Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nastain. They alone we worship, they alone we ask for him. After the first three verses of praising, we are telling that we only worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We only ask him and no one else. Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqim. Show us the straight path. The path of those who have earned that faith. The path of those that have earned the favor and not the path of those that have gone astray. Here we realize that the first three verses of Surah Fatiha, the first chapter of the Quran, is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then we are saying, we only ask Him for help and no one else. And then we say, show us the straight path. And then the path of those that have earned the favor and not the path of have gone astray. So this in Surah Fatiha, the most important part of the Salah. Then the full Quran is the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we should do and what we should not do. You should do zakat, you should do hajj, you should fast, you should not cheat, you should not murder, all these things are there. So Alhamdulillah, the reason Allah is asking us to worship Him is because the reason Allah is asking us to praise Him, if we say Allah Akbar a thousand times, it will not make Allah greater at all. He's already the greatest. Even if you abuse Allah knows Billah, it will not make Allah low. Allah is always the greatest, He will remain. The reason we praise Him is because when we praise Him, we follow His advice. And the full Quran is the advice to the human being, how you should lead your life. So the reason Allah asked us to worship Him is not because we benefit Him, it will benefit the human beings. We praise Him so that we realize we have to follow one who is the greatest, who is the most wise, who is the most knowledgeable. So it will benefit us, it will keep us healthy, it will inshallah take us to Jannah al -Firdos. So the reason we worship Him, we praise Him, is not for His benefit, He doesn't require it, it is for our benefit. Hope that's the question.